Welcome to Zio Story Hour. Today we'll be reading the story of the Dale. In late 1973, the American economy was falling into a recession. The stock market crashed, unemployment was on the rise, inflation was moving at double digits, oil and gas prices spiked, and imported electronics and cars were invading. The automotive industry was ripe for a revolution. All we needed was a superhero, sort of a Wonder Woman for the car market. And her name was Geraldine Elizabeth Liz Carmichael. She stood 6'1 and was a brash entrepreneur. In this typically male-dominated industry, she obviously stood out. She was a widow with five children. She also had a mechanical engineering degree, and she was going to take on Detroit. So she formed the 20th Century Motor Car Corporation in Encino to build her car. Her car was a three-wheeler called the Dale. It was revolutionary in nearly every way. It could withstand a 50 mile per hour crash. It could return 70 miles per gallon. It would cost less than $2,000. It was what was needed to turn things around. And that's just the beginning. The Dale would be just the first of a line of products from 20th Century Motors. There was the Vanagon, a three-wheeled wagon-like people mover. And the Revell, a sportier coupe than the basic Dale. Everything was going so well. The company took in investors and dealers. They announced that their 150,000 square foot plant would soon be kicking out Dales for the buying public. More than $3 million was raised. Liz appeared in People and Newsweek magazines. She appeared on nationwide talk shows, including The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. She was fast becoming the modern Henry Ford. Then the questions started coming up. Of the three prototype Dales, only one ran. During tests of the car, the car would break. Not just break down, but the car would physically break. Turns out the car was cobbled together with two by fours and hardware store door hinges. Suspension pieces came out of a junkyard. The engine was an Onan generator with a lawnmower carburetor. And that plant was just a rented hangar with rent past due. One of the people sent in to examine the company said, on inspection of this vehicle, it was not a viable vehicle at all. It had no engine. Two by fours were holding up the rear wheel. The accelerator was just sitting on the floor. It wasn't even attached. The windows were not safety glass. They would bend back and forth. The doors were put on by regular door hinges, like one might find on a house door. The vehicle just absolutely did not exist. So they went after Carmichael. With the authorities on the case for grand theft, she went on the lam. She moved to Dallas and then Miami, where Liz was finally arrested and taken into custody on April 12th, 1975. She had changed her name to Susan Raines and was working for a dating service. Turns out Liz was actually Jerry Dean Michael. He had been eluding authorities since 1961 when arrested for counterfeiting and jump bail in 1962. He claimed to be preparing for a gender change, but there was little evidence to support it. This time he was arrested for conspiracy, grand theft, and fraud, and was released on $50,000 bail. For the next few years, Jerry fought the allegations, but each appeal was denied. In 1980, Michael failed to show up for court and was once again on the run from the authorities. The trail was cold for about eight years. Then in 1989, the TV show Unsolved Mysteries aired a segment about the case. The show followed up with the statement. Within just minutes of our broadcast, we received a tip from a viewer who recognized Jerry Dean Michael as a flower vendor named Catherine Elizabeth Johnson. Michael had chosen to live in a small community of Dale, Texas, and was arrested at his home. Eight years after he jumped bail, Michael was returned to California. There, he was sentenced to 32 months on several counts arising from the auto scam. He was sent to an all-male facility. After serving for just over two years, Jerry Dean Michael was discharged with three years of parole. It is claimed that Jerry Michael and or Liz Carmichael died in 2004. Although its creator may be gone, it's said the prototype of the Dale can be seen in the permanent collection of the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. Good night, boys and girls.